Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you the different art supplies you can use to create black and white sketches or paintings. Now this video is actually part of an online course that I have on Skillshare. That course is on urban sketching in black and white. So if you are interested to learn how to sketch on location using some of the supplies here, you can check out the Skillshare course. The link will be in the video description below. In this video, I'm going to show you the tools and the effects, the look you can create with them. I have already grouped these supplies into different categories. These are inks, markers, graphite, we have brush pens, pens, dip pens and brushes, paint in tubes and paint in pens, and this is for washing brushes. There is a huge variety of black inks out there in the market. Now before you buy any bottle ink, make sure to read the description to find out the tools that are meant to be used with the inks because some of these inks, they can only be used with very specific tools. This is Rotring ink available in big and small bottles. Now this ink is meant for refilling technical pens. You can see the opening here, it's tapered, it's quite small. That's because you're meant to squeeze the ink into the ink cartridge here. So this ink is not meant for use with brushes and dip pens. I mean, you can use this ink with brushes and dip pen if you squeeze the ink out into a palette. But if you don't finish the ink, um, you may have to throw away the ink or keep find some way to keep the ink so they can reuse it the next time. So this is not that convenient when it comes to using with brushes and dip pens. If you want to use dip pens and brushes, get an ink bottle with a large opening so that you can dip your pen or brush in it. Now when you open an ink bottle, look at the area around the opening to see if there are any physical particles. If you see crusty ink particles or solid ink, it means the ink can solidify and this is the type of inks you do not want to use in fountain pens because they will clog and damage your fountain pen. Generally speaking, if there is no mention of whether or not you can use the ink with fountain pens, do not use the ink with fountain pens. Sometimes the information may be available on the label. Sometimes you have to go to the manufacturer's website to find out. So these two are actually India inks. They are heavily pigmented, so don't use them in fountain pens. And this particular bottle comes with an eyedropper that allows you to take out the ink easily. But the opening here is small, so this is not meant for use with dip pens and brushes. You have to take out the ink using the eyedropper. This bottle of Vincent Newton Liquid India ink is made with Chinese ink stick. So the ink can actually produce very beautiful textures. This sketch was painted using that ink. This is the type of texture you can create using that ink, that Chinese ink when it's diluted, and this is how it looks when it's concentrated. And this is the type of look you can expect with most black inks. It's easier to create flat washes like this when the ink is diluted and you don't see a lot of texture. So different inks for different effects. Now these two bottles are for use with fountain pens. There is however no mention of fountain pen on the label, so you have to find out that information from the website. And this is how a typical fountain pen will look like. It has a metal nib usually, and comes with either an ink cartridge, which is disposable, or a refillable ink converter like this. If you want to use inks with other water-based media, for example, you want to draw with your fountain pen and then apply an ink wash over the lines, make sure you choose waterproof fountain pen inks. Now these two bottles are made by Noodleless Ink and they are waterproof inks made for fountain pens. I also like to use them to refill my brush pens because the ink flow is really good. Now this bottle has black ink and this has grey ink. So I don't have to dilute the black ink to create grey ink, I just 
buy a bottle of gray ink, which is more convenient. Next, let's look at brush pens. Now, these are really convenient for painting because they have ink inside the cartridge here. So this particular one has gray ink. I have filled it with the Noodler's gray ink when it ran out of ink. And this one has black ink. Now, there are different different uh, brands of brush pens out there but they all work the same. The ones that I recommend would be the Pentel color brush pens because they can hold a lot of ink versus this Pentel pocket brush pen which has such a small ink cartridge and it's difficult to refill this because they don't have ink converters for you to refill inks. Brush pens allow you to work like really quickly. So you can finish a quick sketch like this and immediately color it with a brush pen. You don't have to pour ink out of your bottle. You just apply ink onto the page straight away. So this is the Noodler's Lexington Gray Ink. I use this to create shadow effects because this is gray. And this is black ink. So I have Noodler's Bulletproof Black Ink in it. Sometimes I have Rotring Ink in it as well. Uh, Rotring Ink also flows really nicely. So with gray and black, you can create very uh, quick sketches that have really good contrast straight away. And these are really portable. So you can just bring a pen and have two of these brush pens and you can have a very minimal setup when you are sketching outdoors. Next we have dip pens. Now these are not as convenient compared to fountain pens or disposable pens. The main reason why one may want to use a pen like this is for the flex nib. So with this particular pen, you can press down harder to get thicker lines or you can just draw with really thin lines. But it's rather inconvenient because you have to keep reloading the ink. I only use dip pens when I am at home. I don't use this outdoors. You can also use brushes with ink. Now, if you want to use brush with ink, I would recommend you dedicate one brush for black ink. Don't mix your black ink brush with watercolor brushes because some of these inks, they are pigmented. They are going to make your brush hair very hard when they dry. The advantage of using a brush like this is you can cover large areas very quickly, much faster compared to using a brush pen actually. Be sure to wash your brush pen immediately after you no longer use them so as to remove the ink from the bristles. Sometimes I will wash this under a running tap and also use this brush soap to clean the brush more thoroughly. You can also create black and white art using markers. These are alcohol based markers which means if you apply the marker on paper, sometimes the ink may actually soak through the paper. Markers are very convenient because they are very portable and the ink dries very quickly. But markers are more expensive. They do run out of ink rather quickly. And markers are not uh, as flexible compared to using uh, inks that you can dilute. For each gray that you want, you actually have to buy a specific gray marker. Markers can be refilled, but the ink refills are more expensive compared to bottle inks. I used to use a lot of markers, but I switched to using bottle inks because I found out I can save a lot of money. Speaking of saving money, pencils are very affordable. So this is a graphite pencil that you can use for drawing and also for shading. And you can use this with watermedia as well. So you can use 
ink over the pencils. So a pencil, it's very versatile. And this pencil that I'm drawing with right now, this is the Krita Color Nero pencil. This is oil-based charcoal. The difference between this and the graphite pencil is you can run your finger on it and it is less likely to smudge. Whereas on the graphite, you can see it smudges very easily. So I actually prefer to use the oil-based charcoal because I like my work to be cleaner. And also when I accidentally run my finger onto the pencil, it is less likely to smudge. Mechanical pencils are good too. Um, they are very convenient because you don't have to sharpen them, but their limitation is they can only produce lines um, with this single width. So these are not good for shading, obviously, but they are great for like hatching. You can also get water-soluble pencils. So this particular one can be dissolved when you add water to it. And water-soluble pencils are available in sticks like this as well. This is the Derwent Graphy Tone. Again, you can draw. This one is nice because you can actually use this to shade more easily. You can cover a large area more easily. And again, when you add water, it will dissolve. The nice thing about this particular um, water-soluble graphite is you can actually have your brush on the graphite to dissolve it here and then apply the graphite onto your sketch. Now here it seems like the graphite is quite light so you actually have to spend some time to dissolve the graphite to get the intensity. Or you can use water-soluble graphite powder like this one that's made by Artgrav. So you just have to add some water to the graphite and you can pick up a lot more paint compared to dissolving the water-soluble pencil. See how easily it is to paint with this and how easy it is to get this very dark value. Sometimes it would be easier to just use watercolor paint. So these are watercolor pens. You just add water to it and you can paint. So this looks really dark. And you can get some sort of gradation as well. Watercolor paint is available in tubes like this. I use tubes mostly at home, but for pens like this, I can use them outdoors because they are easier to bring around. If you have a watercolor palette, you can actually squeeze the paint inside this tube into a pen and include this into your watercolor palette so that you can do quick tonal or value studies uh, when you want to. If you want to use watercolor, these are some of the colors that I recommend. So I have graphite gray here. Now with graphite gray, you will not be able to get black even if you apply multiple layers of graphite gray. If you want something really dark that you can also dilute, um, consider using paints gray or paints blue gray. Uh, the brand here is Daniel Smith. You can use other brands, of course. With Pins Gray, you can get a flat wash very easily. And when the paint is concentrated, it's very close to black. So the light genuine is not black, but it has this very beautiful granulation. And if you want the very textured look that you can get with Chinese ink, that you saw earlier, use um, Luna Black from Daniel Smith or Mars Black from Schminker. You can go with other brands, of course, just make sure the pigment is PBK11 because that's the pigment that will give you the beautiful granulation.
The last art supply I want to show you is white paint and white gel pen and this white correction fluid pen. So you can use these supplies to create highlights or maybe do some corrections or even add details. I usually use this white pen or white gouache if I need to cover a large area and I would use a brush to do that. So let me just dissolve some of the paint here. You can use a watercolor brush for this. Remember earlier I said you should use a dedicated brush just for black ink. Yeah, uh, keep that brush for black, but for white you can actually use watercolor brush. So you can use this to paint shapes. For tiny details or for drawing thin lines, you can use a white gel pen. This one that I'm using, this is the Pentel K108, which can draw a thin line. Sometimes if the line is um, not that clear, you may have to actually go over it a second time. It's actually quite fun to draw with mixed media. So the lines were drawn with this uh, marker. I can use fountain pen or ink pens to draw the lines as well. This was colored with the Copic marker. This was colored with the watercolor pen. And this is white gel pen. This is white gouache. So mixing and matching can give you a very different um, look. And it's also very fun to mix and match different materials. So just for creating black and white art, there are so many supplies you can choose from. And the main reason why there are so many different supplies is because each one of them has their own advantages and disadvantages. So my recommendation would be to get the supply or tools um, for the type of look that you want to create or for your workflow. So for example, if you are drawing, sketching or painting indoors, you can use any supply here. But if you are sketching outdoors, then it would be good to have more portable options so to see how I use all these tools to create more detailed sketches for urban sketching, just check out my Skillshare course. The link will be in the video description below. Thanks for watching. I hope this video is helpful. See you guys again. Bye.